Mac or PC, whichever one you personally prefer, you have to admit that there are advantages to the other side. I mean, think about it. You simply cannot run, say, Final Cut Pro or Logic Pro on Windows, and at the same time, gaming on Mac OS sucks. If only there were some way that you could run both of them at near full speed simultaneously on the same PC. Oh. What's that there? I guess there is. So behind me and Anthony is a machine that we call the Indecisionator. It can be a Mac, it can be a PC, and through some software magic, it can actually be both of them at the same time, as you can see right here. So uh, what do you say, guys? Should we walk you through how we did it and take it for a spin? I think so after this message from our sponsor. Vertigear's PL4500 RGB LED upgrade kit wirelessly connects to your PC and features tons of color customization options, including audio and visual sync and more. Check them out at the link in the video description. If you've seen any of our videos involving Hackintosh virtual machines, you'll probably have some idea where we're going with this. If not, here's the 20 second version. Using Red Hat's KVM hypervisor, many modern computers can actually have their resources, like CPU cores, system memory, or even graphics cards, divided up and then allocated to multiple users or workloads. Using this technology, you can even install two operating systems on the same computer that exist completely independently of each other, as we've done in the past. So. For today's project, then, we've got something really, really cool for you guys. So we've taken an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X 12-core processor, and then what we've done is we've split those 12 cores straight down the middle between two virtual machines that will run Windows on one side and Mac OS on the other. For graphics, we've gone with an RTX 2080 Ti for our Windows box and a Radeon 7 for our Mac, then we've passed those graphics cards through to their respective VMs. This method of assigning our GPUs results in relatively little lost performance. So the main challenge we ran into for this project, well, there were many. First, NVIDIA's legendary Code 43 error. NVIDIA obviously doesn't like consumers running their GeForce GPUs in a VM. Just go out and buy a Quadro. Combating some weird stuttering in Windows was the next issue that we had to fix, and we fixed that by switching to message signaled interrupts instead of traditional electrical line-based interrupts like you'd normally get in a processor these days, or ever, really. And finally, getting the macOS Catalina beta to use the drivers that Apple included for virtualized storage. That last one in particular is really exciting because Apple has never supported it in the past. Make sure you're subscribed because I'm already working on convincing Linus here to let me work on a video on Mac virtualization once we get the Mac Pro in. Uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna be doing that. Anywho, where things take a bit of a turn today is how we're going to interact with our Frankenstein machine. So in the past, if you wanted to use multiple computers, you'd either have to use a hardware switcher inconveniently also called a KVM, uh, multiple monitors, or in the case of the LG UD79 that we used once before, you would have to be content with 1080p quadrants of a single 16x9 4K display. Today we have something quite special. This display from Philips is the 499P9H, and it's a 1440p super ultra wide display with a double wide 32 by nine aspect ratio, which means that what we're effectively looking at here is a bezel free single display setup where we've got the equivalent of two 27 inch monitors side by side with no bezel in between them. So we can completely seamlessly interact with both of our VMs. How do you do that? You might be asking, well, well, Synergy, How did we do that? <laughs> yeah, Synergy is still kind of trying to work out the kinks of their 2.0 release. So I decided to use a different piece of software, just kind of switch things up, called ShareMouse, which is some unfortunately aggro marketing. But hey, if it works, it works. And for the most part, although there are some glitches, like you can see my Mac OS cursor is actually still kind of ghosted over here. There you go. And you can see kind of the, 
the edge of my Windows cursor. For the most part, it actually does work. We can move the cursor seamlessly from one of our displays over to the other as if the imaginary line down the middle didn't exist. In fact, actually, we could probably do some really cool stuff, like pretend that the whole thing is one machine. So I actually don't know how to switch the wallpaper on a Mac, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this one. Nice. It's an abomination. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Oh, I like this too. LTTstore.com, buy a water bottle. Okay then, so we're good. Essentially what we've got here is two Ryzen 5 3600 systems, but on one machine, we're running Mac OS, and on the other one, we're running Windows with seamless mouse movement between them, which means if I wanted to, I could browse the internet over here in Safari, and then potentially use an Apple Magic Trackpad for gesture control while I fire up, let's say, a game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider over on the other side. Wait, am I just running in a circle right now? Yes. So I'm like, okay, I'm bored of playing video games or whatever and I go over and I browse the forum, then I'm just like, oh yeah, you know what, I'm gonna go back to playing video games. Freaking nuts. Yeah, and you can set up a keyboard shortcut to switch automatically, so you don't even need to create Alt-Tab, we just haven't set that up yet. So let's say gameplay isn't your number one priority. Maybe you're a content creator, like a YouTuber or a Twitch streamer, and that's kind of more your jam. So what you could do then is capture some gameplay with Shadowplay or OBS, and then port that directly over to the Mac by dragging and dropping. And there you can use that if you're more comfortable with it. Check this out. So I just grabbed the clip that I recorded right now while you were talking, dragged it over the middle line, and bloop, there it is. We'll see what the playback looks like. Uh, and there it is, boom! Nice. Just like that. Now, it doesn't copy that quickly. We're limited to about 20 megabytes a second, so there's probably some work the developer could do on that. But, hey, the footage is there. Now, one thing I did want to mention is that we didn't manage to log into the App Store. We think it might be something to do with our copy of Final Cut Pro being on my consumer registered Apple account and this being a developer only OS because it's still the preview. But hey, the point is if you're comfortable editing in Final Cut Pro, you can create your content on Windows and then you can edit it together on the Mac and then you could log into YouTube on Windows and you could upload it from Windows if you wanted to. Pretty cool. Best of all, if you want, you can select just one of the VMs for full productivity with the press of a button and another button and another button and another button. This they, monitor's... They told us it was gonna be just like one button to switch. Yeah, yeah, they said that they could actually set it up to just switch by a single button, but as far as I can tell, no. But it does have a KVM. That is the keyboard video mouse rendition of KVM. Damn, so, red hat. So what's cool about that at the very least is that um, if you wanna use just one set of peripherals for both of your OSs, you can by plugging in through the monitor. Right. Um, let me just switch inputs here. Obviously, I could change it to full resolution, but yeah, as we can see, it's being a little bit dumb. And also, our Mac needs to be unplugged and replugged sometimes in order to pick up. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, that's just Apple things, I think. Okay, it's a little janky, but what's cool about our setup here is that it doesn't even have to be Windows and Mac OS. It's just that thanks to the Mac OS Catalina Beta, Mac OS now supports not just virtualized storage like Anthony mentioned before. That allowed us to take our single PCIe Gen 4, so like this high performance two terabyte SSD and split it up, but it even supports other VertIO devices now so we can get access to near native speeds over the network as well. Like imagine what it would be like to take a machine like this and be able to split something like the upcoming 16 core Ryzen 9 3950X I mean, even without all the PCI Express lanes and memory bandwidth that you could get from something like a Threadripper, you'd be compromising very little, jankiness aside, <laughs> with a dual setup like this. So, I mean, maybe we should come back to this concept when that launches. Make sure you guys are subscribed and stay tuned because if nothing else, we'll definitely be checking out virtualization on the upcoming Mac Pro. Yeah, and by that time, I think that there's a lot more that I could do to smooth out the experience overall. Like uh, having a virtualized 9P shared drive between the two OSs that lets it 
basically become a network drive that native speeds. But that's all we have time for today. So if you haven't seen it already, check out our previous Mac virtualization videos. We'll have them linked below. Pulseway is a real-time remote monitoring and management software that helps you fix problems on the go. You can send commands from any mobile device, and the software is compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux. Pulseway's single app gives you remote desktop functionality, so you can get access to real-time status, system resources, you can see logged in users, you can monitor network performance, you can manage Windows updates, and more. In fact, the sky's the limit because you can create and deploy your own custom scripts to automate your IT tasks. So try it for free at pulseway.com or through our link in the video description. Hi guys, thanks for watching.